Let me show you how to paint orcs like an orc. Coming up next. Right, you lot. Now listen up. My name's Trevor, and I own Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. And now I'm going to show you how to paint an orc as if you was an orc. And that's why I'm in character. But anyway, say my name. Say my name. And then we're going to paint, and you're going to learn something now. So let's go down to my bench and let's paint orcs like an orc. Right, so down here on me bench I got a group of a couple of fine lads here. Bunch of me orcs ready to go out and fight the stunties. However, they're only in primer right now. So we got to give them some character by coloring them in with the paints. So let's go down and see what we're going to do. Right, here's me boys, and we're going to tell them to clear out, because we only need one of them. So I'm going to pick this guy, because he looks like he's ready to go kill off some dwarfs or something. Right, so we're going to reach over here, right in front of the camera, and we're going to throw these guys into the box here. Ah! Get in there, you lot. And now we're going to put that here. We're going to grab this guy that fell on the floor. Uh, look at that, he broke. Can't believe it. All right, get in there. I'll fix you later. Right. So the first thing we got to do is we got to put some skin on them. So we're going to start with war flesh. And then bill tan green. And war boss green and then scarsnick green and I'm going to use this brush right here it's a number two so we're gonna start with war flesh and I'm gonna open up this ball right here and I'm gonna use my brush and I'm gonna paint them Right in his face. Ah, uh, <laughs> all right. Just apply that on there nice and evenly. Don't forget to go under his chin. Just nice and so. And then you want to paint his arms with wire flesh. Just like this. Pretty simple. Now you may see that he's got a bit of paint on from some other time in his life. Well, this guy was painted twice. This is his second time. Somebody else built this one on me when I wasn't looking. All right. And we want to get his hand right here, right behind the shield, with the war flesh. You know, one day I did a war, but it didn't go very far, because the stunties stood in the way. But one day I'll get them stunties again. But for now, I'm just going to apply this wire flesh right to this guy's arm and hand and get him back here to you. Right. Now that's pretty simple, isn't it, kids? You can do this in your own basement with just a number two brush and wire flesh. Right, so this is called a base coat. It's the first coat you put on, and it says right on the bottle 
base, so you know what ones you're using. Right. Now, I'm going to let this dry for a minute, and then we're going to put on the Beel Tan Green. Right. Now that we got the war flesh on them, we're going to paint on this shade color called Beel Tan Green. Now, this is like a watery color. And the nice part is that it gets into all the recesses, all the cracks. So, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Putting on the wash. Putting on the shade. They used to be called washes. But then Games Workshop changed the rules. Ha ha ha. Yeah. Right. So we'll just put it on right here. You gotta wait for your regular green to dry. Your war green. Or else it'll just wash this off. And you don't want that. All right. Who's the best painter? Say my name. Say my name. Ah. Well, this is a simple job. Even a git can get it right. Ha <laughs> ha. A sneaky git. Yeah. You gotta watch the sneaky gits. They'll snab you in the back when you're not looking. Right, I think I got all this painted on. There you see. It's a lot better with the wash, the shades in there. Right, now let's let this dry and we'll add on another green. Right, so the third colour we're putting on here is War Boss Green. Now the idea with this layer is to bring up the value of the colour from the washed shaded colour back to the proper orc skin colour. So we're going to use this a bit sparingly. And we're going to bring the orc into the camera. And now, on this kind of thing, you want to have not so much paint in your brush. And you want to just try to get these here. Or lights. Look this here. Right there. Don't worry about getting paint on the spots that don't have paint on them yet. The primer. Don't be afraid. Just get in there. Now you can see the difference on his face there. So we'll apply this to the arms and everywhere else, like right here on his belly. Now with this you want to go everywhere. Remember you're just trying to hit the high points, you're not trying to repaint it. So don't do that. Just get in there on the high points. Just like this. And like this. You want that brush to not go down in to the depths, but to stay on the top. See, if you're careful, you'll get it too. And a good tip here is just to get the end of your brush. Not the whole thing. Don't dip it right in the pot like a git. Just do it nice and light here. Just like that. And get the top of them knuckles. Oh. 
I'm gonna go on this side here. I know we're making a lot of shadow. It's just me hands sticking in the camera, blocking the light. But what can you do? Orcs can't afford lighting crews. All right. So then we get over here and we're going to paint more onto the flesh with the war boss green. Now any any of us can get a war boss green. So it's not just specific to the war boss. But anyway, there we go. Now you can see the definition of those muscles. Don't forget to get right here behind the back of the neck. There. Now, what's nice with the layer is that it dries up pretty fast. So I don't have to turn the camera off to get the snarse neck green. And we're going to do the same trick, however. This time, we're only going to put this where the natural sunlight would fall on the orc. So that's from the top down. So the sun would fall here. Across the top of his knuckles. Might not be able to get in the back of his shirt around his neck but it will get here. And it will cascade down here and here just a bit. And here. And in his ears. <laughs> right there. There's his ear. Actually, yep, yeah, that's his ear. And there's his other ear right there at the back of the helmet. And then the sun's gonna fall here. And it's gonna fall on his arm right there. And down here. On the top of this hand here. I think I got a little heavy handed with that. But then it's going down on his knuckles here. And it's going to get on this part of his arm. Right there. And then on his face up here. And a bit on his lip and jaw. But it's not going underneath there. Just where the sun hits. Probably not on his belly either. There you have them. Some definition. And some light. Right, let's go on to the next colour. Right, so here's our next colours. So what we're going to do is we're going to paint his pants black. Now you may be looking at this and you may be saying, well, he's already got black pants. It's a primer. But no, no, you don't want to use the primer. I want to show you this kind of technique like that with the lights and stuff. So I want to show you how it's done. Now, if you look, the first color we got is a bad and black, followed by null and oil, then ash and gray. I got some paint on the letters. And Dawnstone. So what you would do is you'd paint them with a bait and black first, then put on the nun oil wash. But I'm gonna cheat a little. I'm putting those over there. Now that just leaves me with the two layers. Ish and grey. And my Dawnstone. Right, so we're going to do that same technique, we're going to crack open this Eschen Great. The paints are looking chunky, and we're going to paint, alright, get it out of the brush as much as we can, then we're going to just bring this up, like this, now. I'm not going to go everywhere. But this gives a black more of a greyish town. 
and we'll try to do it in light. Try to get the highlights of those wrinkles. There we go. There we go. Right. Oh, right there we need a bit of the bed and black. Because that's where me got some green on her. So this is called the touch up. Make it disappear. Just like that. Mm. Right. Now I'm going to have to clean my brush over here in the water that's off camera that you can't see. Okay, dry my bristles on my hand like this. And we're going to get the front part of those pants. I shall let that abandoned black dry a bit more. Going to paint on my bum. And then we're going to move over here. We're going to paint this off here. And this here. And the front of the pants here. Now you can see that it's got a bit of a, a patch right there. A little brighter, not pure black. But more like a, like an, a dirty black. Then, then we're going to get the Dawnstone. And we're going to be very careful with it. Like this. And we're going to just remember it's how the light comes down. So there'll be a bit of light on these cheeky cheeks. And then it'll go down here. It's going to hit the top of these pant legs on the wrinkles. A little bit there a bit there and just a bit on the knee and on those wrinkles and that is the pants really quickly right so now we're going to paint his shirt and I've got some Mephiston red some Carolberg crimson Evil Sun scarlet layer and Wild Rider Leia. And uh, I've also got this plate here. Because we got to thin down my Mephiston Red. It's getting a little bit too chunky. Right, we're going to start with the Mephiston Red. I'm putting it on the brush. I'm dipping my brush in my water. Just one dab. Then... I'm going to mix it a little bit here. This is just thin it down, help it flow out. Right, so he's got armor in the front, but right here, here's where the shirt begins, down at the bottom. And we're going to go under his arm right there. Nice and easy. Pilot that brush around. Be careful not to stab him in the arm with paint, especially red. And we're just going to paint it up here. Now this is my base color. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Right up under behind his arm. And we'll turn him over here. And we'll bring this right along the edge. Then we're going to bring this down here. And right there. I think my house is getting raided by children. Right. Got 
paint this very carefully. Yeah. We almost got this part of it done. <sighs> right, so there he is with the red on there. Now you might want to if your paint's as thin as mine, you might want to just put a bit more right there. Right. And on his helmet. Right. There he is. Right, let's give this guy the shade of the Karoberg Crimson. Bruh. Right, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Alright. So I want to start... Now what I did here is I painted this side of the shield. And now we're just going to run this shade right into the wood grain the plastic wood grain oh ha ha all right now that was a fake laugh if i ever heard one <laughs> so was that okay now we're gonna paint more of this right into there i told all the children to go upstairs so they wouldn't be disturbing me stereo recording. All right. That's all right. They're 35 years old. No. <laughs> nah, maybe not. Okay. Who's the best painter? Say my name. Say my name. And then we're going to paint these little things down here. Painting the dangly bits. <laughs> All right. And right there. And then we're going to paint right there which is the back of the dangly bits all right now we gotta let that dry what do you do when you get waiting for paint to dry oh uh, you could always do a wah so while we're waiting for that Carolberg crimson to dry i'm gonna use me number one brush right here very fine point and I'm going to use some Evil Sun Scarlet. And I'm going to paint in this guy's eyes. So, I'm just going to get a little on the brush right there. Ever so slight. And we're going to put it right here in his eye. One there, and one there. Now he's getting some evil eyes. But what we're gonna do here, is 
So we're going to use the Wild Rider Red right after. And we're going to put Wild Rider Red on top of that other red Evil Suns. But we're not going to go as far. This is an oil light red. It's going to make his eyes pop out even more. There we go. Ooh. Right, so now I'm going to use me Evil Sun Scarlet. Uh, and I'm going to start to bring up the color value from the shade. This is still a little wet here, so I'm going to do that last. So we're just going to go like this. But leave a little bit of your wash toward the base of this helmet so that you get it looking right. You want a little bit of grunge in there. Not like the High Elves that want everything clean and pretty. Right. It's an Orc, so it's got to look a bit dirty. So I'm just lightly dragging this down here. this is the same as on the skin so you're not painting it right perfectly over but you're just dragging that brush use its own weight so you can still see through the grungy bits just like this here there then we want to get down the front of this shirt right in there the right and we want to paint down here on the dangly bits And then turn over. There we go, right there. Right. Now let's try a little bit on the shield here. Now I'm going to go get some more of that out of the brush. And I'm just going to go right like this here. Right across the wood grain. Just using the weight of the brush. To get the highlights on the wood grain. Now I'm going to turn it this way. Yeah. Might be hard to see, but it looks better. Right. Now. Now we're going to do the Wild Rider Red. I'm just shaking it off camera. Right. Now we got the wild right, uh, yeah, the wild rider red, and we's gonna go up right here. Remember, this is your top color, so where the sunlight hits, 
that's where you want the brightest should be right up here too maybe a little rolling over and then we're gonna go right here just on the top bit of the shield not going to go down there uh, maybe a little bit a little bit right here right then you want to do just a little bit here just like a highlight Just a little lower lights. And now, sun wouldn't be on the dangly bits because they're hidden. So we got it right there. Right, now, next color. Right, so now we're gonna apply the metal. So we got lead belcher, none oil, Iron Breaker and Rune Fang Steel. So now we're starting with Lead Belcher. And mine's right at the bottom. So I'm going to just use this ear plate. And I'm just added a bit of water to my brush. And I'm going to paint, mix the paint with the water. And then I'm going to apply it under here. Just like that, right into all this chain mail, the mail plate armor. So we're just painting it right under there, making sure we got it right here. Right, then we're going to paint the end of the spear. there now likes to move me brush like this along with the steel so that the grains of the brush make it look like the metal the metal molecules Now, make sure you paint over all the primer. You don't want to leave any windows or little holes. Little holes in your primer and your metal. And then you can paint these too. Come on, get off me brush. Right. <laughs> Gotta bump the camera every now and again. Make sure you guys aren't sleeping. <laughs> There. I think I got this shield off a of beast man. Because I ran out of shields for these guys. Then I'm going to 
try to carefully paint this band right here. And where he's holding it. That's like a big metal hook right there. Big metal hand grip. I'm getting this on the shield. Because normally when I paint, I don't have to paint around a camera. But I'm doing it for you. For you lot. Because you don't know how to paint. So I got to paint around a camera. But that's okay. I'm going to touch it over with black paint. So there you go. Right, now that my lead belch is dried up, you can see how good it looks. I even got the little studs on my danglies. And I got the little studs on the flaps. And uh, on the shield. Now, we're going to use non oil. And we're going to make it look a little bit better. Now we got the Nolan oil on the brush and we're gonna paint right under there and just let that oil get right into the cracks. Right. Just like that. We'll roll it right over here. And then I'm going to paint it on here. And on here. And on my spear. Make it look nice and oily. Now, I'm not going to put it on the studs. So that might just invite a little too much trouble. So we're going to let that oil dry. And as you can see, it's already getting the detail in there. Oh! I thought I'd do a little something here. Now, while we're letting the iron or the Nolan oil dry, we're going to get a bit of this Screamer pink. And we're going to put it on a brush right here. And we're going to put it right in his mouth. Because he's got a little tongue right there. Ugh. Ugh. That's what he's saying. Ugh. So making them eat the paint. Now you should never eat your paint. Unless you're an orc. Right. Now he's got a little scream of pink in his mouth. So the next color I'm going to make him eat is Carabag Crimson. <laughs> so we're just going to dribble that right in his mouth there. Just bought that. Right, now I think the Nolan oil is starting to dry, so I'm going to move my pink horror and Empire's children back to the back and bring up my Iron Breaker and Rune Fang. So here we go. Opening up the Iron Breaker. I'm just going to get the brush just a bit on the top. And then I'm going to do my spear first. So remember, we're bringing up the metal from the shade. And you want to leave some of the shade in certain spots. I'm 
But here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Then we're going to paint a bit on here. Then we're going to bring it down here. Now remember to keep it light because this part is crucial. You still want to see a bit of the oil in there, but you want to highlight all the plate mail. So that it pops out when you see it. Just like that. Now you got a bit of depth and definition. So I'm gonna paint all my little studs and then I'll get back to you. Right, and now we're gonna use our rune fang steel to bring up the highlights. Now remember, you want to put this nice flowing metal right where the sun would hit the most. So, where does our light hit? Well, it hits up here, right on the sharp bits. And it's right here. And it's going to hit down here. Right on this area. Oh, this sticker. This pig sticker right here. It's going to be right there on the bottom of the hook. Let's give it a little more right here. But not on this side. Right. It should be up here too. Actually. It'll be right here. Right on the strappy. And then I'm going to put a little bit just down here. I think the sun's only going to hit right up here. Right on the high spots. And of course, should it on the top of these studs down here on the dangly bits. Right here. I'm going to put them more to the end of the spikies and they're going to hit right here right here right on the top of this and then right on these dots right on the studs and over here on the shield put it right on to the top And right there. Right. Now, I don't know how well the light picks this up. But there he is. Now we're going to finish off his tongue. So we're going to put in a bit of pink aura. We're going to get it right on the brush. And we're going to make this lad eat the pink aura paint. Like this. Now I'm only going to the front part. Just like that. Then we're going to use our last bit of this pink colour. Finish it off with our Empire's Children. And I'm not going to go too far into his mouth. I'm just going to put a little bit of a dot right to the front. 
right there. Now he's got his tongue right sticking out there. So now we've got to give this guy some teeth in his mouth. So we're using the Zandri dust, Seraphim sepia, Ushtabi bone, and Screaming skull. Right. So we're starting with the Zandri dust. I'm using my number one brush with the tiny hairs. I'm going to put it right in the Zandri dust with a bit of water on it. And then we're going to do his teeth. Now orcs don't usually go to the dentist. So they're going to have some pretty ugly teeth. But here we go. There. Bumping me camera. All right. Right, that's his top teeth. Now we gotta go down here. Be careful not to get any on his tongue. We gotta paint up in the top. Paint the tops. But not the tongue. Now, there's the fierce bit of his choppers. You can see what a bit of colour does to change the whole thing. So now we've got to give his teeth a bit of the gunkum, and we're going to put in the Serfam sepia. Uh, these lids are quite tight. Don't want to spill me paints all over the room. Gonna need some for me other 69,000 boys. Right. So, putting the Seraphim sepia on his teeth. Then we're bumping the camera. And we're going to put it in there. So that they look nice and yucky. Just like it should be. with his yuck teeth right there right there's where it's in focus all right let that dry up right so now we're gonna use Ushab T bone to bring up the highlights of the teeth and also found out something something very exciting there's two more teeth right here on the shield that we forgot. Right. I guess every orc has a secret stash of teeth. Just in case. Alright. Now we're just going to highlight it right here. Alright. Remember to keep a bit of grunge. Close to the jaw. Right close there on the gum line. Right. Then we're going to put a bit on this lot over here. Now 
I'm just dragging my brush across. Just hitting the eye points. There. Right. And then finally, the last bit of the bones is the Screaming Skull. My personal favourite. Every skull should be screaming when you're an orc. Whoa! Alright. Now, just like before, this is your final colour. So you want it right on the top where the sun hits it. Right here. Right on the tonsils. Now that's tonsils, not a tooth. Now what about the ones on the shield? Well, I think the sun's only going to hit on this one side. There we go. That's your teeth. Good for eating the flesh of the elves. Roar. So now we're coming down to the final bunch of paint. Now, you're wondering why did I not paint this wristband or this one? Well, I want a different color than metal, than steel. I want brass. So we got Warplock Bronze, Agrath Earthshade, Brass Scorpion, and Rune Lord Brass. So here we go. Move these out of the way. And we're going to open up our Warplock Bronze. As you can see, it's kind of a dark, mucky color. But that's all right. Because here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Right. So we're painting this right here like this. Now I'm talking quiet so the goblins don't hear. So you don't want the goblins to hear. This is just between you and me and 50 million other people watching this video. <laughs> right. Now anyway, you want to paint these right here. I'm going to leave the spiky bits as brass do. I can hear the children walking up and down the stairs. Thumping away off camera. Right, it takes a very steady hand to paint this. There it is, the beginning of the brass. And now we're gonna gonna put on the Agrath Earth Shade, just to tone it down a bit and get into the recesses. Here we go, right there. 
under here and then just under there and same with here you want to let it flow right where it touches the wrist because then it makes a nice little little line there what separates the green from the metal just like that now we've got to let it dry out get make it look all foggy and then we're gonna paint the other two brass colors on the top right so now we're gonna apply the brass scorpion right onto that metal followed by the rune lord brass so here we go i like using these metallics because it's like you're buffing the metal as opposed to painting it so we're going to go right here now remember you're just trying to get it highlighted bringing up the brass back to its color leave a bit of room for the unpolished bits down below go right like that and then we've got to get the band right here Oh, I'm just going to try to get that one more or less right in the middle. Right down here. There we are. Real simple. Real cunning. Real cunning. Like Gork and Mork, there's your Rune Lord Brass. One is sneaky but cunning, and the other is cunning but sneaky. Right now, this remember this only goes where the sun is, the brightest part of the metal. So I'm only using it to paint the tops. Just like this ear. Right. And there it is. Nice and shiny. So now there's just two things left to paint. One is the spear. And the other is the leather and the ropes. So we're going to start with the wood on the spear using dryad bark. Agrath Earthshade, Gothar Brown, and followed up by Baneblade Brown. So let's start with our dryad bark. And again, we're just doing the same thing, different colors. We're painting this right on the spear. Make sure you don't smudge his hand and here we go here we go you might want to use the side of the brush to cut in around where his fingers are now we're adding a bit of life to this spear this big sticker spear and it's getting pretty good there And we'll go down here. Oh, I bet you didn't know painting could be so easy. But this is the this is the formula for success. Oh, I think the hardest part about this 
is keeping in character as a orc with this voice. <laughs> right. Now we're going to let that dry. And we're going to follow it up with the Agrath Earthshade. But before we do that, let's actually use our second set of colors for the leather. And I'll introduce them. Mornfang Brown, Agrath Earthshade, Skrag Brown, and Deathclaw Brown. So, who's going to take this here Mornfang Brown? And we're going to find out where to stick it. Actually, I already know where to stick it. It's right here. He's got a belt on. So, we're going to carefully follow this around right here. Nice and easy. Give him a good belt. Just like that right here. Mm. Carefully. Right there. Now these three little buttons right there. I'm going to go back and I'm going to paint them with the brass. But I wanted to get this first. Sometimes you got to turn your model upside down. Shake him out. Let the blood rush to his head. There's that. Then there's a the leather straps on his shield right here. So we're going to get those too. Right there. And then you'll notice there's a bit of windings on his ropes. Right here. To hold the spearhead to the shaft. Now the nice part of this is that both these colours use Agrath Earthshade. As a shade. So you can actually save a step and paint the whole thing with the Agrath Earth Shade which is not only cunning and clever but it's clever and cunning right so I'm gonna mm, let's see maybe I don't need to I'm gonna paint right here ah. That's a crossover from this bit of rope right here. Uh, hard to paint around the camera. Gonna have to go back and do a little touch up. there. Right. Now I don't see any silver on that rope because I'm putting it away with the paint. Hiding it under layers of paint. There you go. Whoa. 
I added in the little bits right here of the brass. So now I'm going to put on my Agrath Earthshade. And this is great because now I can put it on my brush nice. And I can do them ropes. Now I'm not going to do the ones that cross over on the blade. But I'm going to put it right here. Well, maybe I can try it up there. There we go. Not so scary. Right. Now that's the one beauty about them all having a common colour. You can have a common shade in there. And that's what I meant to say. And then we're going to put it right on the belt here. Right on the warp lock bronze. And then back here. And then here. Right like that. Right. So now let's get back to doing the painting. So move these out like this here. All right. So we're going to do the spear. We're going to use a Gothor Brown. Because that's the way we likes it. We're going to put my brush in there. We're just going to make it nice and light. Now this is wood, so it's got a bit of a wood green. So we're going to just jiggle the brush on there. Get it nice and light. Bring it up out of here. Make it look kind of liney, like that there. There we go. Now we got a bit of definition on there. And then we're going to finish off the top bits with the Bane Blade Brown. Bane Blade. That's a tank that me futuristic cousins will be breaking up. All right. So again, just like the light, we're going to put the lightest bit at the tops where the sun's gonna hit it where the sun does shine right there we go so now we got that bit of the spear done we're gonna get those paints out of the way and then we're gonna do the leather work and the rope and we do that with our scrag brown and our death claw brown. Here we go, here we go. Now this is much like with the bracelets. You want to get more or less in the middle. Right there. You want to leave a bit of the browns 
of the sh shades. Bring it right up to your little buttons right down there. You don't want to paint your button. And then we've got the rope here. We're just going to get the tops. Then we're going to put in some brown here. And we're doing the ropes. I'm going to drag it across really light. Mm. I've got too much paint on my brush. There we go, looking a bit better. Then we finish it off with the Death Claw Brown. And just like before, you want to put it where the sun's gonna be, the most highest Death Claw. Right, so you're bringing it right here. right on the top and we'll put a bit here And a bit right here and a bit on the top where those knots are and then there'd be some right on his belt right there A little pointies on the end. Now it won't go down on the front of his belt, but just on the back where the sun's the most prevalent. Then we're going to finish with Brass Scorpion and the Rune Lord Brass. Right where those buttons were. One there, one there, and one there. Right there. <laughs> All right. Now we've got the Rune Lord brass. We'll just finish up the highlights on those buttons. Now I don't think much light's going to shine down there. So we're going to put it just on the top. And that's it. Now we got to do the little fur bits on the boots and then we can base her. Right, so now we need the fuzzy bits on his boots. So we're going to use Raycarth Flesh, Reichland Flesh Slade, 
pallid witch flesh and white scar. So, let's start with the Raycarth flesh. Remove that guy right there. Now, I don't use this one too much, so it's a bit ugly. However, here we go. Now we're painting the boots right like that. I think you guys are getting this pretty well. Could even just dry brush this one on. But we'll go solid. Solid right there. Now I'm going to leave his boots in the black primer without doing anything to them. But if you want, you can either paint them like the leather or you can paint them like this black ear. Which I noticed I've got a bit of touch up to do on it. There we go. That's got the one boot, except for right there. Now I'm turning them upside down so I can paint this right to the top of his boot. Nice and neat. Clever and cunning. Or cunning and clever. There we go. He's got some little fluffies on his boots. Right. Now we're going to use Reichland Flesh Shade as the colour for our shade and this will give a bit of a dirty look as it goes in between all the little bits of the fur So we got it just like that. Now we're going to let that dry. Right, now that the Reichland flesh shade is dried, we're going to use the Pallid Witch flesh to bring up our colour. So here we go. Here we go, here we go. Say my name. Okay. <laughs> right. Now, we're going to just dry brush this right on here. Just like that. Right down there where I can't see it. Yeah. 
in a little bit here. Now you're starting to get it to pop out like when you squeeze somebody's <laughs> right and there you go right there and then what we're gonna do is right where that sunlight hits it we're gonna get it with a white scar and this is a really white paint that's going funny on me right so here we go now sun's probably gonna fall right about here somewhere so we're gonna make it a couple of bits of that really really bright Right there, across the tops, on the back. Got a little too much weight right there. Let's do a little in the front. And there we go. Nice and fluffy on the boots. Now, you may be saying that it doesn't look right sitting on a big black disc. So we're going to just do a bit of the basin on this. So let's go over. But before we do, I just want to show you something. There. There's all the paints that I used. Right there. That's a lot of paint. Right, now let's go down and base this guy. So here we are back on the bench and we got one more color. This is the base color, Castilian Green. And I got this here bucket with the basing stuff. Now this is model railroad basing but the Games Workshop also has something similar. So what we're going to do here, is we're just going to grab this paint. And we're going to paint the bottom. Let's just move this right here. Get it into camera. And we're going to zoom in. Crank down. And zoom in. Right to there. Right. So now we're going to get our brush nice and wet and we're going to put it down right here. And I'm going to show you a trick. Doesn't require PVA glue. It's actually pretty, pretty cunning and clever. Just like Gork and Mork. Or was it cunning? Oh, clever in cunning. I can't remember. No matter. Then we just put it right there. Paint this on nice and wet. Right there. And I'm not going to worry too much about getting over the edge but we put it right here right where he's standing and now while all this paint is wet we're gonna stick our brush right in the water and move that and then we get out our basing tray we're going to slide it right there. 
get it all right on that. And then back again this way. Right when the paint is wet. And then we're gonna tap them. Try to get some of it off. And then I'm gonna take it away from the tray. And I'm gonna blow off camera. You don't want to blow in the tray because you'll have all that right in your face. Right. And there he is. He's got the grass right on his feet. Just zoom in right there. Zoom out because that was too close. Okay, there he is. Now wasn't that clever and cunning? And you'll see it. The paint dried a bit around the edge. So I'm going to do it again. Right, now, this overhanging bit, I'm just going to scrape with my knife. Keeping the same angle as the base. Just like that. Right there. And the paint's still a little wet right there. But that's okay. Because we're going to let it dry. And then... Then we'll just take a quick look and we'll wrap up this video. And there's our orc right there. Looking ever so clever and cunning. Or cunning and clever. However you want to put it. Right. I hope you enjoyed that video where I got to show you how to paint up your orcs and make them look really, really good for your table battles. Now, if you'd like to see some of me other orc videos, click here, click here, click here, no here, and then subscribe right here. And don't forget to click on the little image of the bell so that you will get caught up with all our stuff. See you next time, and I won't talk like an orc anymore, because that kills my throat. Bye.